Video games and skateboarding were no strangers before Black Box's prolific skate franchise came along. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater dominated the gaming landscape for its thrilling and arcade-like gameplay. The Tony Hawk games were some of the most critically and commercially successful games for their time. But, by 2007, that success had faded away due to oversaturation in the marketplace. Gamers grew tired of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and were longing for a fresher experience. Skate could not have come at a more perfect time. EA, one of the largest gaming companies in the world, which houses many of gaming's biggest franchises, noticed this decay of Tony Hawk games and was eager to capitalize. They turned towards one of their own development studios to make this happen. Black Box Games Black Box was famous for working on EA's NHL and Need for Speed game franchises. The team was eager to jump on board to a new skateboarding game, since lots of the workers on the team were skaters themselves. They began work on the project in 2005. Because of their skating background, a main focus for them was nailing a more realistic approach to skating in a video game compared to Tony Hawk's more sensationalized version of skateboarding. They went as far as bringing along famous skateboarder Danny Way early on in development to authentically capture the feeling of skateboarding. They aimed to translate the actions a skater would normally do with their feet on the board to the actions of a gamer's thumbs on their controller. The team was tired of memorizing complex button mashing combinations that plagued skating games before. They spent the first year working on a prototype that abandoned buttons entirely and instead utilized how a player would move a single control stick to get the board to respond accordingly. The prototype proved engaging and addicting to staff. By the end of 2006, the prototype had evolved into a full-fledged game, adding a vast open world for the player to explore and implemented a dual stick control method, an evolution of the single stick prototype. This dual stick control method meant the left stick controlled player direction while the right stick controlled the tricks executed on the board. It was named the Flick It system and became the backbone to their realistic gameplay approach. The final product released on September 2007 titled Skate and received massive critical and commercial success. Skate went on to outsell its strongest competitor at the time, Tony Hawk's Proving Grounds, and Skate was then crowned the new king of the skateboarding genre. Black Box loved the praise, and EA loved the money. They publicly stated how Skate's success had immensely exceeded their expectations, and that a sequel was surely on the way. Black Box was not even sure they would get to make another game, but they already had tons of ideas they knew fans would love going forward with the sequel. In a little over a year after Skate's initial release, Skate 2 hit shelves in January 2009. Skate 2 brought along a myriad of new mechanics such as finally getting off your board and moving around objects to create your own skating possibilities within the open world. Not only were players able to walk off their board, but they were given an abundance of new tricks like grabbing your board and taking one foot off to open up new trick possibilities such as hippie jumps and hand plans. Skate 2 received similar success to the one before. Fans especially praised Skate 2 for its explosion of meaningful content and gameplay improvements. This was the kind of innovative sequel fans were hoping for, and the series continued to crush its competition. However, it wasn't its competition that Black Box should have been looking out for. EA was suffering from their annual losses and felt that they needed to do something to make up for it. This meant cutting their workforce down by 10%. And to achieve this, they set their eyes on Black Box. Despite all of Black Box's success with the Skate franchise, layoffs hit the studio shortly after the release of Skate 2. A large portion of Black Box's staff were let go. Some have reported as much as two-thirds of Black Box's entire staff being laid off. By June of 2009, whatever was left of Black Box was relocated from Vancouver to Burnaby to join EA Canada's offices. The studio was hacked to pieces and then asked to make the next installment in the Skate franchise. So again, in just a year, Black Box released Skate 3 on May 2010. It proved to be another successful entry for the franchise. The game boasted a new map, a skate park editor, and some robust online features. But to fans, none of these additions seem substantial enough to warrant a third entry. 
It was still a beloved sequel, but one that didn't feel as big of a leap forward for the series like 2 did. After the release of Skate 3, EA no longer believed in the skateboarding genre, despite Skate 3 selling near a supremely impressive 5 million units. But to EA, that still wasn't enough money for them compared to their other sport franchises like Madden or FIFA. With EA abandoning the skate franchise, Black Box went back to work on the Need for Speed brand, releasing the narrative-focused racing game Need for Speed The Run in November of 2011 to mediocre reviews. Sadly, even more layoffs at the studio, which ultimately led to Black Box's closure in April 2013. EA had officially gutted Black Box games, along with any hope for a return to the Skate franchise. However, as the years have gone by, a spark has appeared. In 2014, internet celebrity PewDiePie started creating a Let's Play series on his YouTube channel, playing through Skate 3. This reignited a lot of buzz behind the Skate franchise. So much so, the game received another boost in sales even after four years on store shelves. This led into 2016, where fans took to social media to make a stand for their lost but not forgotten franchise. They flooded EA's social media with hashtags such as Make EA Skate Again. Skate is one of video game's most beloved franchises, and yet it is unlikely that a new game would ever be made again. It's clear that the fans are hungry for another chance to flick it once more. I know this because I'm one of them. Skate is one of my all-time favorite video games. There isn't another game like it. No other game challenges you the way Skate does. No other game gives you the same sense of nirvana from traversing its open world like Skate does. And no other game captures the kind of dumb fun that Skate does. I'm not even a fan of skateboarding, in that the Skate franchise glues me onto the controller for how fluid and fun it plays. I love these games, and it sucks. It sucks being a fan of a franchise you know won't ever come back. Each year I anticipate an announcement of Skate 4, but I know it won't ever happen. And even if it did happen, they killed the development team behind it, so it wouldn't even be made by the same people. It won't even be made by the same EA. EA today has only gotten worse since they started implementing greedy gambling tactics like loot boxes into their games that ruin them for anybody who doesn't want to fork over extra money. I want to see EA make Skate 4 in my lifetime, but I can't help but ask would it even be worth it at this point? Without the original team, would they ever be able to recapture what made Skate so good? I know it's not impossible, and maybe that's why I hold out hope still. I love the Skate series, and I love looking forward to Escape 4 that most likely will never come. <laughs>